Welcome to Coaches Connect podcast. This podcast features the diverse perspective of a thriving global community of coaches, leaders, and experts sharing their captivating stories, journeys, expert advice, and more. Hello, and welcome to Coaches Connect podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Jones. And today we have an amazing guest. I can't wait to speak with her, Pamela Caravas. Uh, she was dubbed the Ferrari of coaches by her students and clients back in 2013. She went from teaching to coaching in 2007 and set up her own practice in 2009. Since 2011 until today, she, was, she has been training others to become professional coaches. She authored the first EMCC accredited course in Greece in 2013. While researching for her program, she went into neuroscience and microexpressions and presented on the latter at the EMCC conference in Athens. She has since then presented twice more at EMCC conferences on branding for coaches in Istanbul and using FBI questioning techniques to train coaches virtually. She collaborated for four years with the Entrepreneurial Initiative for the Dutch Embassy in Greece, coaching entrepreneurs on clarity of message, coaching, confidence, and branding. She has two research publications focused on using coaching and rehabilitation for people with phobias and traumas. Her research extends into the lies clients tell during a coaching session, a project that she presented in Boston at the Harvard Medical School Leadership Conference in 2018. Following this, she trained with former FBI agents on questioning techniques, making her the first global lead to connect the skill sets commonly used by the FBI and coaches. She has traveled to amazing places to deliver corporate training and coaching, including Casablanca, Tunisia, Algeria, Italy, New York, Paris, and Amsterdam. In 2021, she set up a course on PR and branding, PR Brandifesto, a new course on neuropsychology for professionals and shorter courses on negotiation skills and anti-fragility. Since 2019, she has been working on various projects with United Nations agencies ranging from negotiation skills at the UNSS College to career and leadership coaching for the UNDP, UNV, and more recently, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. She had her company incorporated in the UK in 2016 and has established a clientele mostly in London, New York, and Amsterdam. Let's welcome Pamela. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh dear me, it's like listening to all this, it's like, oh wow, I've done my fair share of work. That's me, that's me, right? I'm so excited. And I had it on like, yeah, okay, it's a long list of things. Yes, you know, I am so intrigued by your bio. Um, and I think many people listening will be super intrigued because, you know, everyone has that story of how they got to where they are today. And I always like to kind of ask that coach the question, like, how did you get to where you are today? What changed for you to decide to switch from teaching coaching in 2007? Um, well, thanks for having me, first of all. It's like, it's, it's the best thing that has happened, like, recently, given the fact that I wanted to have uh, a website where everything that you mentioned earlier was going to be somewhere all together. It's like yeah. LinkedIn is fine, LinkedIn is great, but I needed my own website to say that this is what I've done, guys. So the story, I, I mentioned it on the website as well. I started off uh, teaching children the English language, which was amazing. And I had been doing it for about 20 years. And then out of, it was accidental, I went into companies, into businesses, and I started teaching business English to adults. And then one of the managers noticed that I could actually scan people really easily Mm -hmm. put me to the test and this is the real story and uh, I've only said it once before it's like he actually put me to the test and said like you know um, can you tell me about this person or can you tell me about this manager and because he had known he had known them for years he knew if I was spot on or not so he was quiet every time he put me to the test he was very very quiet and he says hmm mm. and then after four or five people that I had you know he had asked me to scan he actually says, like, you know, you're very, very close to who they are and the way you have profiled them. And I was like, okay, I'm just a teacher of English. Like, he says, how do you do it? And I says, I don't know. I just, you know. I Just do it. <laughs> I just do it. And he says, like, this is a rare skill that you have. And as it happened, it was about then, it was in 2005 that I went uh, 
I discovered an article in the Harper's Bazaar for women. It's like a women's magazine. It was all about business, how women are in the yeah. corporate world. And it spoke about coaching. So this guy, in combination with the article and some of the advice from other managers that I used to teach English to, they says like, you know, don't remain just a teacher. Do something with the skill that you have. So I just figured that maybe coaching is the way to do something with that skill. As it were, it was. Nice. I love that evolution of how, you know, I think oftentimes we have these backgrounds in certain areas that we're like, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm just going to be a teacher for the rest of my life. What other skill, you know, and there's so much fruit in yeah. what we've done in our experiences that it's so transferable. But many times we sit back and say, well, I probably couldn't do that because as you and I were talking before we came on here, my background's in music. Right. Yeah. And I went from music to corporate to coaching back into corporate a little bit now with some projects. But you just never know how mm -hmm. your story is going to reach others. Right. And really kind of yeah. propel you forward. So that's yeah. very that's very interesting in terms of how you were able to shift. And now you shifted, you got there and you've done so many things, <laughs> so many things. I, I and think, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. The background in teaching means that you never stop learning. So yes. this is part of me. And it's like I used to tell my students, and it never stopped being part of me. Yeah. And teaching is fabulous for coaching. It and, is. You know, the fact that you're now teaching other coaches, you know, how to become professional coaches. So how did you decide to shift from, I'm not saying you're not still coaching, but to, to really kind of just decide to teach others how to become coaches. How did you decide to go into that? Oh, that's another interesting story. I'm full of stories. <laughs> that's okay. I'm here to listen. <laughs> I actually first became um, a teacher in coaching and then I became a coach pretty much because I had a mentor from wow. Amsterdam. And he was like, yeah, he still is like my second father. So he took me under his wing. And uh, when I first, first started out, I was like, I'm not confident to be a coach because I haven't had enough training. Mm -hmm. Even though I was one that had had more than two years training in coaching, I did want to start, you know, coaching in 2007. So I discovered coaching in 2005. I went into training in 2007. And I was like, I'm not confident enough. So I started like sort of coaching others. 2009, was not happy, went back to Australia, did a short course there, spoke with a lot of coaches went to Amsterdam, did another shorter course. And his advice was like, you know, what is your past? Oh, I'm a businesswoman. So what do you do? I used to teach. I had, you know, private language school. So teaching is in your blood. Yeah. So you're not confident to coach yet, as you say. Yeah. So what's the next step? So he coached me into setting up a new business. <laughs> the business. <laughs> so the business was like, since you're confident in teaching and you're great in conveying messages and knowledge, yeah start off with that so very soon as i was teaching i became so confident i understood which theory worked which didn't work as as i was repeating it and i was explaining it i was like hey that doesn't make sense or this makes sense so i started becoming better and better with my own clients so it was teaching that i started first i set up the academy i i i, I mean i i think that's very interesting um you know and looking back on you know how many of us got into coaching, that may not have been a, a bad way to go. Like in terms of, you know, maybe you teach first, really make sure you get the tools down and then pop over to start coaching a bit more. I, mm -hmm. I really like that. And I love the insight that your mentor gave you in terms of, well, let's do what does work for you. Exactly. Right? And you worked on that. You built a business around that. So in that time, as we are going to talk about pieces about how to brand yourself on today's call, um, how did you go about, okay, you decided to do this business and how did you go about really branding yourself and sharing, you know, to others, like, this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm gonna be moving forward. How did you go about doing that? Well, um, interesting question because first, uh, the first branding thing that I had that students first said that I was, is the same that my little ones used to say, Oh, Miss Pamela, you're very strict, but we learn English with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sounds like you had you had some boundaries and some ground rules. <laughs> I, I did. So I think the same boundaries and ground rules came into adult training as well. So I says, if you want, you know, to learn how to become a coach, you're going to learn the basics first and not go out and about, you know, um, promoting yourselves as, as coaches if you haven't actually assessed your own selves and you're 100% sure that you will become great coaches. So it evolved from the name, the reputation that I had as a teacher. It's like I'm strict, but, but students learn the language. They can speak the language. It went into I'm strict with my adult students, but they learn everything. And when they go out there, they're confident enough to actually coach. So the first branding word was Maleficent. It wasn't, <laughs> it was like, you know, I was very, very tough. It was tough love with my students and it still is. It's not that I have changed in that, but this was the first branding image that I had. So when I spoke, when I explained, when I analyzed and I could see potential in the students, um, I would expect them to behave as such and to deliver as much. So mm -hmm. this was the first branding image that I had. And I knew that I had to do something with it because I, I wasn't the soft, you know, trainer. I wasn't the soft instructor. I the was kumbaya the, is what we call it over here, the kumbaya yeah. coach. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I said, this is what, this is who I am. And this is how I'm going to brand myself. And because I want people to know what they can expect when they sign up for one of my courses, I'm going to put it out there. So I want my students to know what they're going to get. They're going to have some tough luck. I'm going to have expectations. And this started off as part of my branding. So it was pretty much accidental because of my style of teaching and instructing and training. And because I could profile them, I could tell who would be, you know, the, um, the spiritual person, the spiritual coach, who would be the business coach, who would be the corporate person. I could tell where they would be going with their coaching, you know, uh, aspirations. So mm -hmm. I would help them um, define themselves. So in helping them define their own way of coaching, I would become better in defining my way of coaching and my way of training. So it all came together as a package. And this mm -hmm. is what I always say, if you want to bring yourself, you have to be able to understand something that could be negative or positive, put it together. And start creating your brand. Don't say that I'm not Maleficent. I will never say that I'm not tough. Okay? Because people could see through that. Correct. People, yeah, because they could tell. If I open my mouth and I start training, the first thing is ground rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, she's a little, yeah, she's, boy, she's not soft. <laughs> right? They're going to know. They're yeah, going to know. But I smile. But then I smile. And then I, I, I explain things. And they know that I have the knowledge. I have the experience. So all these they had to be part of my brand. I could not hide something that I am and I don't want to sell something that I'm not. So that's the number one thing. Bring the negatives with the positives and put them together. So essentially you're saying, you know, brand yourself, brand who you are. Brand Person who you are, your personality. Personality. Yeah. And, and how and has that, sorry, go ahead. And if you don't know your personality, it's going to be very hard to brand yourself. So how do you think coaches that are working with you um, feel when they start with that whole, like their personality and trying to understanding and then when they're, when they're finished, like, how do you feel most people when they come and start working with you, how do they feel about that? Well, in the past, I would say they might feel a little bit intimidated, but also very curious. Mm. So curiosity was more intense than intimidated. <laughs> yes. So it's like we are starting on a journey and we want this kick in the butt so we can, you know, change our lives, but not in the sense of change the, you know, the beautiful pink bubble and let's do something happy and positivity and stuff, like, but literally change some things that we don't like. So they knew that in the coaching course, they would be receiving a lot of coaching to understand their personality. And every coaching session that we did during the course would bring out elements of their personality. And this is what helped me, helped them develop a certain voice by the end of the course. So it was the, the actual coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. That's when the Ferrari of coaches came into play. That's what I was going to ask you. How did we get the Ferrari of coaches? <laughs> it, was, it was actually, well, I have to thank that top, top 
top manager at that company years and years ago when he he was the one him and it, and my mom they saw that I could actually scan and profile people so I have to thank him because I I put that tool into use and because I could you know scan my students and listen to them I could easily ask the questions that would bring out elements of the personality within mm -hmm. a section or two and they would go like Pam how did you do that and very quickly get to the point of what they wanted to change or say or do or modify or learn even more about. So the speed at which I could do the coaching sessions and, you know, mm -hmm. the brain would go kaboom, 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 one question after the other, and the insight that they would have, that's how it came about. Ferrari, the speed. <laughs> the speed right because I was like hmm is it the speed is it the look is it the <laughs> but it's the, but it's the, spe it's the, it's the speed, speed and the horsepower. How you, yeah and the horsepower the horsepower how you get how you get how you get to um yeah. the understanding of what they need yeah. you know in the work that you're doing and, and you're doing a lot of profiling work and skill set work um what is one thing that you've really learned about yourself that you love well, it's a new term that I came across, how anti-fragile I am. <laughs> mm, tell me more about that. Well, um, this term I came across when I was in New York and I love going into bookstores and I love, you know, losing myself in there and because that's what I do. I just, when I was in Edinburgh, you know how many hours I spent into the tiny little bookstores trying to discover those <laughs> books that were interesting? And whenever I meet Scottish people, you know, that I coach, and I was in Edinburgh and I got lost in those tiny little bookstores that you have. Oh, yes, yes. It, that was common knowledge for them. It's like, so, but ever since I was young, I remember myself getting lost in bookstores. So I, I read the title and I decide whether it's good or not. And at some point, mm -hmm. I saw this title, Anti Fragile. And this was a book that was written in 2012 by Nassim Taleb. And I bought the book, and it's like a big book. It's like all about maths and things. And it's like difficult terminology. But then when COVID struck, I, I went back to the book and I started understanding how to become, how to thrive through chaos, how to use all the negativity, something that happens, all the adverse things, the situations, you know, red circumstances that happen, how we can thrive. Not become resilient, but you know, mm -hmm. thrive out of this chaos. Thrive, you know, out of these red circumstances. So take them on board, use them as part of our, you know, brain power and you know, physical muscle, you know, system, and become something different, something stronger, something anti-fragile. So I learned that I was anti-fragile all these years. It's something that mom and dad apparently gave me, but now I had the word to put on it. So I was not just resilient with everything that has happened in life because I've experienced death, I've experienced loss, I've experienced like, you know, having no money, like business went bankrupt and everything. So I've turned things around many a times. Anti-fragile is the word. I love that. That's beautiful. Um, in, in learning that that has that is the word or has always been the word and you've been able, able to put the word to the, to the thought or to the action. Has that shifted anything with you um, now that you've been able to give this a name? Yeah. It made me 10 times more confident in oh. developing confidence, understanding what a client means and helping other people, you know, discover their personality because I did it. I could stand my ground even you know stronger because i knew what was going on so this shift was becoming even more anti-fragile mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i knew that i could move away from oh i'm just resilient i am something more than that and this gave me an even better perspective on my own branding you know it's interesting how we get caught up in the two or the couple words of i'm just right? And how yeah. you went from, I'm not just resilient, right? There's so much more to that word. I think many of us live in the, oh, I'm so resilient. I'm so resilient. I'm so resilient. But there's a lot more that kind of encompasses that word, right? Yes. And what you're, what you're talking about, I mean, that's an amazing, I've not read that book. I've actually heard of it. 
Um, but that's an amazing read. And I, and I've, you know, as you were talking, I kind of made a little note of that's probably a book I, I, I need to focus on coming up. I just think it's um, beautiful how you were able to recognize and name what you've always been, right? We have like a superpower. Maybe that's like your superpower, or maybe you have a different one that you'd like to share. But there is, there is such beauty in being able to put the two things together and being like, that's it. Yeah. I got it. It's now yeah. grown me even further, propelled me even further. And now I'm just going to, you know, be even more dynamic in what you're doing. I actually, I actually, when I discovered it and became more dynamic, it's like uh, when COVID started, I had undergone an operation. It was a very difficult operation. And I had to stay in bed and I had to stay away from people. So I stayed on my parents' farm mm -hmm. for about eight months away from, you know, just in case, you know, something happened to me and I could not risk, you know, contracting COVID or anything. Right, but right. It was a brand new thing. So what I did is like I took anti-fragility and I set up a course for people that were suffering from the new era, you know, the new COVID era. So right at the beginning, I think it was in May 2020 when it first started. Mm -hmm. um, and I set up a course called, you know, dealing with red circumstances. And I delivered it, you know, to the Greek market for the Greeks who were suffering because this is yeah. you know, the people I felt closer to because after New York and London, I came back for the operation, you know, and I got, uh, I remained in Greece. I said, I'm going to do this for the Greek people. And I'm translating this course, like dealing with red circumstances in English. So it's going to be in uh, less than a month, you know, for public use, free for everyone to, um, to have on the website. Um, and it taught people how to understand coaching, coaching themselves, how to understand personality, how to develop strategic priorities, and uh, how to deal with red circumstances, as Bob Iger, the former CEO of Disney, um, used to call them red circumstances. And I used anti-fragility and lessons from Mowgli, you know, on how to be able to deal with what was going on in the world. So anti-fragility was the core training, you know, of this free course that I had for everyone. So it's going to go global as well because I still, and I really do believe that people should learn not just to be resilient. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference between resilience and anti-fragility. Mm -hmm. so, uh, wow. And so eight months on the farm. Wow. Yeah. Just kind of in your, you know, I, I, there's a lot of introspection that I believe many people have done um, during the early periods of COVID. And, and still, I mean, there's still areas of where people aren't able to go out and they're still at home or they're scared, right? We're, we're mm -hmm. just dealing with so many different emotions around this. And so I can imagine your course has been quite helpful for people to try to just, you know, spend some time with themselves, have that interest perspective of just trying to say, okay, who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? And oftentimes I feel like, you know, I do believe many things happen for a reason. I don't say that I love when you know, horrible things happen, but I do believe that there are things that we always learn from every situation. Mm -hmm. And this situation shut everyone down where you, there was nowhere else to turn. You kind of had to look inward. You kind of had to do a little bit of work. Um, and I do believe those that did some work yes. are thriving <laughs> are, 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 are what you were saying. I feel like those that did the, the work that started thinking about it and, and listening to, you know, some of the things that you were saying or, you know, going to your website or whatever, um, you know, people start, like I said, putting names to things that they weren't sure about before. And I do believe all the introspection that people have had is really propelling so many more people forward now. It's not to say that people still don't have a little bit of that blah feeling of, are we ever going to get to a place where I don't, not really into the word normal, um, but get to a place where we can just feel like we can be a little bit more free. Right. And, um, <laughs> And I just think that, you know, the thought process is a big part of that because I believe freeing our mind um, with what has happened is also going to help us continue to, to feel free as we move forward. But I don't know you, what your thoughts are about that. <laughs> this is, yeah, I, I'm very vocal about that. I'm very, very vocal. But you know why? Because I don't like the word normal going back to, you know, what was I, I don't like that either because I don't I'm want like, to be where I was two years ago. I, I love where I, I am today. <laughs> I don't want to leave that. And I'm like, you know, do you really want to go back to where you were? Do you really want to go back to your comfort zone? It's like so many books, you know, so many courses. If you have a look at what the universities have done, what Coursera has done, what Udemy have done, what I'm doing, it's like so many organizations 
try to help people understand that new knowledge means new skill sets. Yes. And you have to move forward. So this is called evolution. So, yes. Yes. so you need to evolve if you want to do something with your life. You can't go back. And when I hear people saying, I just want to go back to where I was, I just smile and I'm like, I'm not going to analyze this. I'm not going, no. to, I'm not going to go into this. I'm not going to go back. There is no going back, you know, pretty much because simply you have received so much pressure so much knowledge that your brain cells were affected your psychology was affected yes. so if you're going to fight what you have received naturally under this pressure and chaos and try to go back that is wasted energy my friend a lot of fighting internal I mean, fighting exactly yeah because you have new knowledge what are you going to do with that new knowledge it's yeah. for me it is a sin not to use new knowledge that you have already, you know, gained. And people have paid, the previous years used to pay so much money on these courses to learn about resilience and, and inner strength. You got it for free from what has happened on this planet. Yes. <laughs> I like, I love that. If you haven't had to go through anything before, <laughs> and you, but we've all gone through it together. It's the first exactly. time in a very long time where, everyone was going through the same thing exactly. you couldn't call anyone from any country to be like oh how's it they would say oh my my you know yeah. someone's been affected by covid or you know everyone was going through the same trauma at yeah, the same it's, time it's free knowledge free experience yeah. do something with it yeah right, I, this like, is what i say <laughs> yay yay i love the vocalness <laughs> I am, see, I would, I would be, I would be right in that class of like, yes, she's direct. I love it. I will be right there. Um, you know, I wanted to to kind of ask a few more things because I was really struck by, um, and totally believe in, you know, the whole branding is yourself and being really who you are. I'm not one that likes to use the word often. Authentic. That's not a word that I'm really drawn I'm to. I feel like it's as well. I'm yeah, I feel like it's yeah, I feel like it's it's so overused. And what does it mean? And and all that kind of thing. But it's like you know, just being who you are, um, and and those that will be attracted to you will come on your journey with you, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know, in knowing that you need to brand yourself, what are any other tips or thoughts that you have for people that are listening in terms of other ways to think about branding? Um, you know, the cliche is to say to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. It's what I said before. It's like you get free knowledge, do something with it. So the first tip is like try to understand what free knowledge you have received and what are you mm -hmm. going to do with it. Don't mm -hmm. resist. So resistance is something that people have, you know, in their DNA. It's like of what this is who we are. It's like we resist change. We resist right. this thing different. So if you, yeah. yeah. If you really, really want to change and brand yourself, you have to actually not resist what has come your way. And when we say authentic, I, I always ask people, it's like, you know, don't try to be authentic because authentic means you have to show your negative, you know, side as well. So this is you being authentic. So when people say it's like, I have the imposter syndrome. So this is you being authentic with imposter syndrome. Yeah. Just, right? it's, yeah, it's everything. Yeah, it's like, yeah, being authentic is everything. So it's all your negative things. Then say, be your authentic self. Your authentic self is you with your fears. It's you with your lying. It's you with your truths. It's you with everything. So try to understand which part of this is good for business. What people don't understand is like, um, should I imitate or copy people? You know what I heard the other day? I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to mention this, but I saw the term while I was Googling something about branding, mm -hmm. the Marie For Forleanism, I don't know, because of Marie Forleo. Yeah, 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 I know her. She's yeah. Very, yeah, she's very yeah. well known, and she gives advice. And I saw somebody saying, like, I hate the Marie For Forleanism. I don't know how they said it. I said, what does that mean? It's like, do not imitate, do not copy. She gives you advice. Even she tells you, do not do what I do. What works for me may not work That's for you. Correct. So, so when it comes to branding, try not to imitate other people. So my website, the new website, has a black background or a dark, you know, brown, almost black. Yeah. Background. It doesn't have white. It's not this like, you know, the, you know, uplifting and positive thing. No, it has me in it. So try to understand that you should not be afraid of actually 
getting to the core of what you believe or what you stand for. So when I say being anti-fragile, it means when somebody tries to say, you know, Pamela, I don't think this is right, or I don't think this is good for your branding. I would say, can you explain to me why it's not good? Because I have 10 reasons to tell you that A, B, C, D, not the marketing analysis, the scientific analysis of color psychology or branding psychology. I don't even go there. We don't need this if we do not understand how we, who we are in our core in the sense that we are not afraid to put it out there for business. The other example is when your mom says, don't post this photo, think about it twice. Maybe your mom sees you under a different light. Maybe your clients see you under a different light. Take it into consideration. You have to make the decision at the end of the day if this photo is good for you, your business or not. So when you say brand yourself, what is your business going to be like? Who do you want to attract? When you do market research and they say try to find your audience, I say, are you going to try to find the audience that is going to be attracted to you? Or are you going to try to build audience? People say find oh. your audience. I say, oh. <laughs> that's a gem. That's a gem. One word makes it so different. Find or build. Because finding think, them, that's great. Yeah. You found them. Now what are we doing? Exactly. I say build. And you know why build? It goes one step further. Build means doing 10 times more hard work. Find like means you, yeah. Find means you try to take from others. Build, you create something that has to do with who you are and what you offer. That's a lot of hard work. Oh, I love that, Pamela. I mean, build. Hey, everyone, build your audience. It's yeah, just finding. Crap. Yeah, find means, as I said, like, you know, tr attracting, trying to get from the other well known coaches, from the oh, other. Let me find them. You're mining. You're mining yeah, through. Like, exactly. let me find. Who could I? Let's yeah. see. But, you know, building is very, it's a very strong um, action word, word yes. right? I mean, find is an action as well, but it, you know what I mean? In terms of when I think of build, you just like, you know, you're doing that, that foundation, you're building a structure, you're building a relationship, you're building and you know, you know, it's just motion momentum that goes with the word build versus yeah. find. But that, that's how you can stand your ground with everything you say. That's how I can be so vocal. That's, mm -hmm. how I, I, that's why I, I don't need to think twice about, you know, what I say and what I put out there because I have mm -hmm. tested it. Mm -hmm. I have tested mm -hmm. it's not that I, it's not something that I have not tested and I'm still testing all the time and I and I want people to challenge themselves to test uh, I never we could talk for we could talk for hours on this you know we're going to be closing up a few things that are going to be going on um you know I know that you're going to be speaking on an upcoming webinar with Delenta in April yeah. Um, so that's going to be awesome. People get to no get another. Yeah. People get another dose of Pamela. Um, you know, but before we close out, I wanted to ask you, you know, what is something special or some advice that you would like to leave the audience with that's either been told to you or something that you just have found and you want to give to others? Hmm. I have added this on my website. It is a line that I heard in Robin Hood. I use lines from films very often. Yeah. Um, in the previous website, it's like experience, you know, <laughs> good experience comes from bad judgment, you know. It was something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so in the current website, I have uh, rise and rise again until lambs become lions. And this wow. was in the film you know, Robin Hood. Um, with uh, Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. and I saw this, and people try to analyze it a lot. And I just say, inside us, we may feel like lambs. With coaching, with what is happening, red circumstances, with all the negative things that might be happening, you know, there could be some great things as well. We may not be able to see them, but if we see ourselves as lambs, and if we understand that we have to rise again and again until we become lions, that's evolution. That's my job. Sorry, they gave me all the tinglys. <laughs> um, what a wonderful way to, to end our podcast. I have enjoyed my time with you. 
Uh, I'm sure others have. And I know that many people will be tuning in um, to listen to you again on this and also the upcoming webinar. Thank you so much for your time and uh, stay safe and be well. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to be able to analyze this. It's like, I love it. Man, <laughs> I believe in sharing, being a former teacher and a current yeah. teacher, forever teacher. Yeah, thank you it's so much. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Bye, you bye. bye now. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Make sure to follow us to catch more episodes of the Coaches Connect podcast. Thank you.